G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews, another not so weekly, weekly news, and I've done this about 12 times today, it's not going well at all, I'm trying to keep it short, as I usually do, but ah, oh, just, I ramble on, it's really boring, even from this end of the microphone, but anyway, first thing, shirt, Rotor Geeks, there you go, Team Rotor Geeks, there you go, send me a t-shirt and I will wear it, and remember the summer's drawing in a bit, so there won't be too much time for wearing t-shirts, um, in fact it's autumn now, so there won't be too many more t-shirt days, they'll soon have shirt and jersey on, so you know, get in while you can. Um, yeah, so Rotor Geeks, um, I don't necessarily endorse the products or services that appear on my t-shirts, but this time I do, and you'll find out why in a coming video. Um, right, what have I got coming up? Um, well, I'm gonna do, try and keep, as I say, keep this short, and I have a piece of paper here. Um, quick things, coming up this week, Mini, Mem Mini Member version two, Try saying that quickly. Mini Member version 2. Uh, the Mini Member version 1 was good. I liked it a lot. Version 2 is better. And it's, it's better in a number of ways. And I'll show you um, how that performs and get some flight videos in this week. So watch out for that one. Is it my Mini Quad of choice? Well, I'm not going to tell you. You'll have to wait and see because I'm also doing the um, top end Mini Quad build video. I've already done it once. I'm doing it a second time because all these build videos, you've got to do them twice. Otherwise, you get halfway through and realize, oh, I could have done this easier another way. So I do it once without the camera, then I do it again with the camera. So there's a lot of work in those. They really are big videos. But hey, you know, I said I'd do them, so I'm doing them. So there's the top end, which is the one that I've chosen as all things considered the best mini quad, in my opinion, because remember, it, it, the opinion does come into it. You can't sort of definitely say objectively, this is the best one. It has to be a certain amount of subjective input. So in my opinion, uh, this is the best mini quad and I'll be building it to the best spec that I can. Um, and also the, the budget mini quad, you know, the, and I've got to say, I mean, no one's, no surprise to anyone, the budget one's going to be based around the ZMR250 frame, but how cheap can we build it so that it's still a good machine to fly? You wait and see, and I'll give you the full build video with links to size, places where you can get a little bit. So if you want to do like the AXN I did, you will be able to build it along with me, buy the bits from the places that I link to and you should end up with a really good little super budget mini quad as well. Remember I don't get any kickback on these things. I don't have any, there's no affiliate links, there's no you know backroom deals where I get a commission. No, it's, a, it's just um, if I was to do that then it would completely skew the objectivity of the work I do so there's no commercial gain in it from me at all. The only money I get from all what I'm doing here is the, the small amount that YouTube gives me for the ads that run on here and the very kind donations that people occasionally make through the PayPal. That's the only money I make out of this. I do not take money from suppliers or anything else. Right, what else have I got coming up? I've got uh, part two of the RunCam HD video. Now remember I did part one of the RunCam and it's turning out to be not a bad little camera. We don't know the price. They haven't given us a price so we don't know what the value is but I did put up some more video on my XJet channel taken with the run cam. I put that up a week or two ago. So if you want to have a look at that, this is what it looks like. Here's a little snippet. And uh, if you want to see the whole video, then go to the description of this video and you'll find a link on which you can click to see the entire video. Now, run cam have sent me some new software for configuring that camera. So I'll be installing that and I'll be configuring the run cam HD as close as possible to the configuration I've got on my Mobius. And then I'll put both of them on my cine tank and I'll fly them around in a range of lighting conditions so you can see how they compare. And then once run cam give us a price, you can work out for yourself whether you think it's better value than the Mobius. The FreeSky L9R receiver, long range, 2.4 gigahertz. Now a lot of people, you know, uh, long range is becoming quite popular even though regulators are increasingly clamping down on it. Well, you can't fly beyond visual line of sight, it's just not safe. Well, news to the regulators, hobbyists have been flying beyond visual line of sight with FPV for many years. And as far as I'm aware, no one's ever been killed, nothing's ever, no property's ever been damaged, no full-size aircraft been knocked out of the sky. So I don't believe you when you tell us it's too unsafe to allow, but, the law is the law, so we won't be flying beyond visual line of sight. Won't even be blinking because that would be locked up for that. Anyway, so the Freesky L, Freesky L9R, it's a long range 2.4 gig receiver. I did a teardown of it in a review about six months ago, but I didn't post it on this channel because there was some extra homework I had to do to figure out how they got this extra range, and I've done that. So I'll be posting that this week so you can see that receiver. People are getting five miles out of the damn thing. How are they doing that, eh? Well, you'll find out when I show you in the review how they get all this extra range out of a 2.4 gig system. And what else? Oh, cameras. Again, on the FPV wagon, cameras, there are now well, there's always have been, but I suppose, but I'm gonna look at some of the cased cameras. So I looked at board cameras, looked at the 600 TV line super head um, wide dynamic range camera, and I've looked at the FEOV camera, and they're both very good cameras, and they're 
respective areas. But increasingly now, even mini quads are going to cased cameras. So you can tilt them easily for when you're flying really fast. So, and when you're flying on a fixed wing, of course, a cased camera protects your camera in the event that you have a crash. So cased cameras are very popular and I'm looking at several of them. Um, I've bought a number and I've been sent one to review. So I will be doing that at the same time. Coming out good. Oh, speaking of long range too, I am already doing the tech work on the full reviews of some UHF systems covering the base from the Orange Long Range, the Dragon Link, the Easy UHF, the Arcbird, the um, Shearer system. So I've got a pretty full bench of these UHF systems. I'm going to look at them from a technical perspective. We'll look at the build quality, we'll look at the performance, we'll look at things like the um, um, rejection of in-band and out-of-band signals and how well they work together and what sort of range we can get out of them. Of course, we'll just do that on the whiteboard. We won't actually fly out of visual range. That would be terrible. Also look at why you might want a long range system. And it, the long range is a bit um, misleading actually because they're UHF systems. And a lot of people are using them even just for line of sight flying. Why are they doing that? What's going on? Especially with quad flying, you know, proximity flying with quads. Why are people using UHF over 2.4? Well, I'll tell you why and I'll demonstrate it so you get a pretty good idea and you'll see that, hey, just because you've got a long range system doesn't mean you're out to break the law. Um, what else have we got here? Mm, it's pretty much it, I think. Except to say, um, there's been some changes in or some proposed regulatory changes in respect to drones around the world. As you know, regulators, they're trying really hard to save us from these evil baby killing drones that are about to infest our skies and rain death and havoc upon us all. Yep. Um, so in the UK, the House of Lords, um, in their infinite wisdom, have decided that they think all drones should be registered. Yes, they should. Um, you can see their point a little commercially. I mean, there's no problem with registering a commercial drone because these can be quite large, they can be quite dangerous. And if you're going to operate commercially, then there needs to be ways of identifying the craft so that if someone's operating inappropriately, you know, that this can be reported back. No, it's a simple thing. All our cars have registration numbers on there, don't have license plates, so that if someone does something bad, you can track them down and hit them with a stick. Um, the House of Lords have suggested this or, you know, strongly urging this be done for, for drones. But, and this is where they, you know, obviously had too much port or too much bloody crack cocaine or whatever it is they have over there. Um, cocoa probably. Anyway, they've decided that it should also cover recreational drones. Really? Come on you guys, what are you smoking? Let's be serious now. They want to include recreational drones. They should be registered. Well, honestly, how many recreational drones are there in the UK? And, you know, who's going to manage all this? And even if they do, there's obviously going to have to be a fee because you can't process all this information without charging somebody. So it means you have to pay to have your drone registered, which means a lot of people just won't bother. I mean, look, firearms have to be registered in some countries, but there are still a lot of unregistered firearms in those countries. Um, and that they foolishly believe, because they're saying, oh, it'll protect us against terrorism and protect us against people doing bad things with these recreational drones. Well, no, of course it's not going to at all. Do you think a terrorist is going to register his drone? Of course he's not. He's gonna, just like criminals don't register their guns. Why would they? No, it's completely ridiculous, stupid, and it shows how out of touch the politicians and the regulators are with the reality of the situation we find ourselves in with these recreational drones. It's silly, silly beyond belief. Um, yeah, anyway, but here in New Zealand, on the flip side of the coin, our regulator, the Civil Aviation Authority, is mooting the prospect of allowing beyond visual line of sight operations of drones. And you might think, woohoo, yay, but no, don't, because it's only commercial operators because they have the necessary skills and the necessary equipment and the necessary um, good behavior to warrant giving this right to fly beyond visual line of sight. Recreational flyers who have no money, sorry, who have um, less skill, knowledge and uh, commitment to safety, um, they won't be allowed to fly beyond visual line of sight because it'd be far too dangerous. Because if we look carefully at the figures to date, I mean, beyond visual line of sight FPV has been going on for what, about 10 years? Um, and if you look at the number of people that have been killed, the number of um, incidents involving property, the number of full-size aircraft that have been brought down from people flying these models beyond visual line of sight, you'll see very clearly... No, it's not a good argument, is it? No, anyway. Um, there haven't been anyone killed. There's been no full-size aircraft brought down. And as far as I'm aware, no property has been damaged by people flying recreational drones beyond visual line of sight. But it's obviously still far too dangerous. Way too dangerous to allow, so we won't allow that. But seriously speaking, I can see the merits in putting restrictions on when people can fly beyond visual line of sight. Give someone a Phantom 2 they've just bought off and try and fly beyond visual line of sight. It's going to end in disaster, but some of the people in this hobby are very skilled, they're very proficient, they know what they're doing, and hopefully through the stuff I present, they know the limitations of their equipment. 
And why can't they fly beyond visual line of sight? As we know, there is a 500 foot minimum altitude for full size aircraft and a 400 foot maximum altitude for models. So this threat that they're going to crash into full size aircraft, as long as the people flying the models are flying under 400 feet, then if they do have an incident with a full size aircraft, it's not the model flyer that's going to be to blame, it's the full size pilot. And we know full size pilots break the regulations just as much as model flyers. So surely it's a responsibility of everybody to obey the rules and then these potential conflicts won't occur. But even better, why don't they just say, we're going to nominate some areas around the country, and this could happen anywhere in the world, USA, UK, Canada, nominate areas which are danger zones to full-size aircraft. So maybe a 100 square miles, 10 miles by 10 miles area, which is in the middle of nowhere, so there's no houses, there's no buildings, there's no towns, there's no roads, middle of nowhere, and does it designate it as a danger area to full-size aircraft. Then say, People can fly beyond visual line of sight there within the boundaries of that area completely safely because there's nothing to hit. They're not going to kill anyone. There's nobody there. They're not going to bring down a full-size aircraft because full-size full -size aircraft are prohibited from flying there. Maybe only certain times of the day or certain times of the week. It, it gives people the freedom to do what they want to do without turning them into criminals. Regulators don't seem to want to do that. They just think it's easier to say, no, no, we don't. I know no one's, I know you've been a 100% safety record, but well, you know, if we were doing it, we couldn't trust ourselves, so we're not going to trust you. It's basically what it boils down to. It's crap. Absolute bullshit. Anyway, I'm going on too long. I've rambled again. So um, it's time to wrap up the Not So Weekly Weekly News. But just before I go, at the risk of rambling on again, people have been asking, what are you doing here? You know, what's happening with the airfield and all that sort of stuff? Well, I'll do another video on that. I said I'd do another video. I'm not going to clutter up the weekly news. Suffice to say, I have three options. I can sue the snot out of the local council because they've been harassing me and defaming me. I can relocate my operation to an area where I don't have to deal with people like this and their obvious petty personal vendettas. Or I can take up model trains and I can get a cloth cap and a pipe and I can put a big piece of plywood in my living room and I can go woo woo and watch the little trains chuff around the track and die of infinite boredom within a matter of minutes. So those are the three options that I'm considering at the moment and I'll let you know what I'm going to do when I know. In the meantime, of course, I will continue with the reviews. Uh, people have sent stuff in for review, so I will be reviewing that. I have a commitment if someone sends me stuff, I've got to review it. So I will be doing that. So there's a whole heap of stuff. Regardless, even if I take up the model train thing and die, several hours later, um, I'll make sure I've finished off the reviews of stuff that people have sent me in the meantime. So fear not, you haven't seen the end of me just yet. But having said that, so much to do, so little time. Time for me to get back to the bench. Thanks for watching. See you soon.